Hey, Andre, you know, uh, this podcast has been delayed by almost five days. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you why that is. I've actually been listening to a lot of podcasts, you know, hoping to make ours better, learning from the best. Yes. Uh, and one of the things that drives me absolutely crazy is a thing that I hear all the time in other podcasts, and that is, hey, we're doing something and we can't talk about it, but let me tease it. But we can't talk about it. But it's so cool, but we can't talk about it. No, but we can talk about this stuff. Yeah, and so right we, now. we made a decision. Uh, instead of saying, hey, we were somewhere really cool and we drove some really cool trucks, but we can't talk about them, um, to actually hold off on publishing this podcast until we could talk about them. So in this podcast, we're going to talk about two of the most exciting new trucks out there. Yes, the least expensive brand new pickup, which is the Ford Maverick. And the most expensive brand new pickup, which is the Hummer electric pickup. Yes. So I had an opportunity uh, recently, uh, just last week, to drive the all-new 2022 Ford Maverick. This is the first drive program. Yep. So I spent about a day, I would say, actually, we had a lot of time, a lot of drive time in this truck. So I wanted to kind of share some of my experiences and thoughts and talk about the event. Yeah, and I had the opportunity to thank you, GMC, uh, to actually drive and be one of the first journalists to get behind the wheel of the Hummer EV pickup. Uh, and so I want to talk about that as well. And the problem is that there was an embargo on both of these programs. And you want to explain what an embargo is and why uh, people use them or why manufacturers use them? Sure. Uh, this is basically because a manufacturer, when they introduce a new vehicle, in this case, uh, they have many journalists come. And journalists, they cannot all be there at the same day, right? So they have different, they, they call them waves of journalists where, you know, somebody comes on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, etc. So in order to make it fair for all or as fair as possible, the manufacturer says, well, hear this. You can take some pictures or sometimes not. Right. Yep. In your case. Yes, I could not <laughs> take any pictures. We were at the Milford Proving Grounds, which is. Well, I can't, you know, I, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to get into a whole other conversation, okay. but it's where okay. they test all their new vehicles. Yes. So you could not take could pictures have. because of the, where you were. I could because we were in Nashville, Tennessee. And, but they, they usually say you cannot share driving impressions or maybe even driving images or videos of these vehicles until a certain time. So when is the uh, Maverick embargo? It's what time? It's right now. Yeah, so which is Tuesday, right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's Tuesday at six a.m. Yeah. Um, Eastern. And the Hummer embargo was yesterday. Yeah, um, or tomorrow if you're <laughs> figure out how we tape these things. <laughs> but normally we publish the truck podcast over the weekend, and right. we're delayed by two days so that we wouldn't be sitting here saying, "Hey, we went someplace really cool, but we can't talk about it." So we thought, you know what? We'd rather be delayed and talk about it and let you know all the details. So we've got the most expensive truck with the Hummer EV at one hundred and twelve thousand dollars, yeah. and we've got the least expensive new pickup, which is the Maverick uh, Hybrid at, at about twenty thousand dollars or about twenty one thousand four hundred dollars including destination charges so you could buy potentially if you bought the base maverick xl which is a front wheel drive hybrid you could probably buy what five of them uh to equal a gmc hummer which has a thousand horsepower so i was going to say let's figure out which one we should talk about but we already started talking about the maverick so okay. let's let's dive into the maverick so tell me about the program where'd you go andre so this was in and around uh Nashville, Tennessee, mm -hmm. which is a beautiful area. And yes, that area is growing. <laughs> I heard traffic has gotten really bad. Yeah. Was that true? Um, it, I saw some of that. I saw some of that. But coming from Denver, where our you know, growth here of population, uh, I just felt at home. Okay. <laughs> that just kind of felt uh, kind of normal. But anyways, um, so we showed up the first day. And the first day, we had a half day with the truck, basically, which was actually really great. Because the more time we have with the pickup uh, on the first, you know, uh, on the first event like this, the more videos we can do, the more information we can provide for you guys. So uh, the first truck I drove was actually the Maverick First Edition, yeah, which is the fanciest one. Yeah, and me and you actually did a video from the Chicago Auto Show where we met with one of the engineers, did a walk around, and we got to sit in it. So I'm super curious what it's like to actually drive the First Edition. That's also the most expensive, isn't it? Yeah, so what I tried to do actually, and this video is already published, of course, on TFL Truck uh, YouTube channel, uh, the um, I I, did, I took the most expensive Maverick, which was this first edition, and the least expensive one, yep. and I kind of compared some of the options. And the most expensive one has a turbocharged engine. It's a two-liter EcoBoost. It's got all-wheel drive, 
and it's got about 250 horsepower, which sounds like a lot, right? I mean, it's a good amount of power, 277 pound-feet of torque, and it drives, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't blow you away. You know, it, it's, not a per, it's not a performance machine, obviously. It's, it's meant as more of a runabout. It's very small. It's actually a foot shorter, approximately, than a Ford Ranger. So if you looked at the Ford Ranger midsize truck, shrunk it by about almost a foot in length, and then it's about the same width approximately, and, and it's also a lot shorter. So it doesn't have as much ground clearance, Maverick does not, and, and the roof is kind of low. And also the bed is very accessible, right? You can just, you know, lean how, in how easily. Big is, how big is the bed? It's four and a half feet. Like, so can I ask you the question I've been dying to ask? Yes. All right, now we can talk about how it drives. So we recently, I recently got to drive the Santa Cruz, the Hyundai, which is the, their compact pickup truck. And let's face it, that's more of a lifestyle truck if you're being kind. If you're being more critical, it's, you know, it's the, it's the next incarnation of the Subaru Baja, right? Uh, but the one thing about that vehicle, uh, and if you want to learn about that, we've done another podcast, so I don't want to delve into that one necessarily. But the one thing that, that struck me after driving it is that it's basically a Tucson with a bed. Right? They built it on the Tucson platform, and if you didn't look out the rear of the truck, you probably think you're in a Tucson. Mm-hmm. So it, it doesn't feel like a truck. It feels like a crossover with a bed. Uh, and since the Maverick is built on basically the chassis used for the Bronco Sport and the Escape, mm-hmm. is it a crossover with a bed or is it a truck? So it drives like a crossover with a bed. Okay. In fact, um, and it's becoming cliche probably, right? Because when we reviewed the Honda Ridgeline, it's a similar thing. It's a similar feeling. And I think it comes from the suspension itself. So in the case of this first edition Maverick, um, it's actually all independent, right? Uh, uh, coil springs. And of course, tuned um, a little bit more for the street. So it's very comfortable, very predictable. It just feels like you're driving an escape. But then you remember you're longer than an escape, and uh, you look back, and there's a bed behind you. So, uh, you know, there are different criteria for is it a truck or not. That's the question I'm getting to, right? Yes. So, at TFL, basically, we, we decide if it's a truck or not because of the fact that it has or doesn't have a bed, right? If it has a bed, it's a truck. If it doesn't have a bed, it's not a truck. But I was listening to, uh, you know, Mr. Holman's podcast. Truck show podcast? Yeah, yeah. And they have a much, you know, different set of criteria. So their criteria are things like, does it have four-wheel drive? Does it have a low range? Is the engine mounted longitudinally or traversely, right? Transverse, yeah. Transversely, yeah. Uh, uh, Which is a much... Frame. Does it have a frame or not? Does it have have a frame? Is it a fully box frame, right? Uh, I, I kind of like to keep things simple <laughs> so i'm always like if it's got a bed it's a truck uh and so in my book or in, at least in the tfl book it's a truck uh but do you think it's a truck so i would extend that so i i would normally agree with you and i would say if it has a if it has an open bed yeah right? open bed and it doesn't matter how how big this bed is you know it can be four feet it can be four and a half feet like this in this case in the maverick it can be five six whatever uh, but it also has my second criteria, I would say, is it has to have some extra capability. You know, if you have a little pickup with a thousand pound of payload, eh, you know, you can put four people in there and just kind of go about your business and so, maybe so five people. Are you saying you're going to determine if it's a truck by how much it tows and what the payload is? Because these little guys have a lot of, actually, the Santa Cruz has as much payload or more payload than a full size truck. I want to say the only Some full size trucks, yeah, yes. Yeah, it had 1,400 pounds of payload. Yeah, it, the one we drove. Yeah. Uh, the one I drove, uh, this Maverick XL, this base one had 1,563. Yeah, I know. So this <laughs> is getting up there. A lot you of know, stuff you can carry. My F 150 hybrid that I have has about 17 hundred pounds of payload so this little tiny pickup almost had the same payload as my big full-size half-ton truck and andre you know how much the trx has it's got a thousand pounds <laughs> yeah it's a lot of payload for a, for a seventy-seven thousand pound truck. So, so, pounds of so, payload but, but i don't want to put a minimum roman I, I i don't want to say you know absolutely it must have this payload or this towing i'm just saying it has to be more than a crossover like, if you got into an Escape and looked at the payload sticker, I don't think you will see 1,500 pounds. All right. So how much you know does the Maverick tow at its max? 4,000 pounds, which is <laughs> not big. It's okay. You know, like, you know, I use you as my as my towing guide, right? Because okay. I think you represent what most people who are towing tow, which is a boat, 
right? It's it, 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 this is we're talking about casual towing. We're not talking about doing it for for work. living yeah. or like tow piglet out there where you know you're moving things and big heavy things around. I'm talking about like casual towing where you're either towing like a toy hauler with let's say side by sides. Or in your case, a boat. And let's face it, that that number is about six thousand pounds. I think at six thousand pounds, you're well into you know what most people would use. A lot of campers are campers, six thousand pounds. Exactly. Yeah. So so basically, you're under that number. You are, and this number is also less than the Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz can tow up to five thousand pounds. So you would say four thousand pounds. Eh? Why you know why even bother with this truck? Uh, so we we towed actually four trailers. So Ford actually provided four different setups, four different trailer sizes and, and kinds for us to try out. Um, the turbocharged one, the two liter one, uh, with more power and all wheel drive, can tow, can be equipped to tow up to about 4,000 pounds. I towed about, they said, they told me 3,650. Can I guess what you towed? Yeah, I, what was guess, it? I'm gonna take a guess. I, I have no clue, I don't know what you towed. We haven't published, well we had, now at this point we published it, but when we're recording this we had, it's confusing. Uh, I'm gonna say they had like uh, jet skis. Yes, <laughs> but but that was not the heaviest. Oh, that wasn't the heaviest. No, oh, okay. no the jet ski one was 2,000 pounds. Okay, all right. So, so two jet skis so, on the trailer, 2,000 pounds. Okay, so we had jet skis and then you had to have some kind of a camper. Yes, that was about 2,600 pounds. Okay, all right. So was it like an off-roady camper with the it big... It was, uh, you know those uh, cool new like, yeah. uh, Airstreams? The, the $52,000 little baby Airstream? That yeah, kind? it's it's called the base yeah, camp. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know those. That, that, that one. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of $52,000 for that uh, thing. Uh, well, it's twice the price of the pickup. I know. Um, it's, it's, but it's nice. It's but that's not nice. the heaviest. It was about 2,600 pounds. All right. So uh, maybe they – did they have like a trailer with a bunch of like horse mats or – No. No, they didn't do it. They actually had real things. Real things. Mm. No no, no water, no horse mats, no – All right. How about a small boat? No. They didn't have a small boat, no. just the jet skis. No, no just jet skis. Mm, so what else could you tow that would be about 4,000 pounds? Well, think about a Frody, something... A side-by-side. -side. Basically, yes. Yeah. So they had a trailer, which was a flat deck trailer with two quads. Yeah. You know, not, not, not a single side-by-side, -side, but two little quads on Cause, it. Because I want to say a Polaris 4, those are like 1,800 pounds if you get the 4 That seater. could be yeah. pushing it on that the trailer. It, yeah. yeah, that could be pushing it. Anyway, the trailer had a tandem axle. It was The trailer was actually almost longer than the pickup itself. Um, and... You know, it towed really well. So, first of all, the squat was, you know, kind of noticeable, not huge. Um, I, I, I thought that was okay. Uh, then what Ford did is actually they provide a 7-pin connector. Which is nice. The, the trailer had brakes. Yeah. And then the Ford Maverick has a brake controller. Built in? Built in. It right comes there. comes from the factory? Yes, on the factory. Wow. But But it's on the left. You know, the steering wheel is here. It's on your, but by your left hand. Mr. Right Truck below. hates that. He doesn't. Like I, I know. If, if Kent was here, if Mr. Truck was here, he would be. What about you know, our, the left-handed people out there? They must love that. They must love it. But yeah. the thing is, on the right, there's no place to put it uh -huh. because they kind of have like a low cutout. Is, is it an option or is it standard? It's an option. It's an option. Yeah. Okay. So that makes it a pickup truck, in my opinion, because it's prepared to tow. It has an in, uh, integrated brake controller, has a hitch. It has seven-pin connection. I, I didn't have to go out to AutoZone and buy my own, you know, brake controllers or, you know, other wiring. I had, I, it was provided right there in the truck. It's interesting, like, you know, we've, we've been having a little bit of a dust up with Rivian. Uh, and um, if you want to see that video, head on over to TFL now. You'll see what we're, we're talking about there. Um, which is interesting because they've got a brake controller in there. Rivian, according yes. to what we've read, not what we've tried, tows 11,000 pounds, which is a lot. I would say, you know, if you're casually towing over 8,000 pounds, you're getting into some area where you better know what you're doing because exactly. that's a lot of weight. Anyway, they have a brake controller, but it's an electronic brake controller, apparently, that's built into the, uh, the, 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 you know, the operating system. Yeah, so the way uh, Rivian set it up, and th this is actually in their owner's manual, too, uh, the Rivian brake controller is actually in the digital screen. Yeah. So you go in the towing mode, and you have, like, you can control your gain, you know, how much braking uh, um, you're asking from the trailer for the trailer to do. And then the manual override is actually a little wheel on the steering wheel in the Rivian. Which could be confusing. It's one yeah, of those like multiple, like a Tesla, where it does many different things. It yeah. can control like your mirrors, or it can control the up and down of the steering wheel, depending on what's, what function So I'm wondering, and we haven't tested this no. yet. I'm wondering if in the Rivian, like when you're towing, that button does only one thing. 
right? It cannot do multiple things because if it did, in an emergency when you need to, like, let's say your trailer is swaying, you need to hit the manual tra trailer brake override, and you don't want to fumble. Right. You don't. You don't want to be fumbling with that. So let's go back to the Maverick. Is it a traditional brake controller where you kind of squeeze yeah. the little thing? Okay. Yeah, and there's a squeeze, and there's plus or minus button to increase okay. or decrease. That's cool. Brake. Yeah. So if, from that standpoint, it has pretty good payload. Actually, more than some mid-size trucks, even, uh, or even maybe some full-size trucks. It has uh, mediocre towing, uh, four thousand pounds. You know, you can bring your expensive Airstream small trailer uh, with you. Uh, and it has the technology to kind of allow you to tow and allow you to safely, you know, do some truck stuff. Okay, so we, we talked about towing. Yes. What about the bed? Let's talk about the bed next. How useful is the bed? Are there any clever and innovative features? The bed has been kind of going through the truck bed, pickup truck bed, has been going through kind of a renaissance, right? We've, we've had the tailgate wars where we've yes. got barn-style doors that Ram does. We've got the, you know, the, the very intricate GM. Uh, fold-out steps. Yeah, fold-out steps. <laughs> yes. The pro tailgate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so is there anything unique or special about Is Is it actually dampened? No, it's not. No, really. So, so it's just so like plop. The tailgate just plops. But hey, you know, that's how they used to do it in the old days. And that's how we're going to do it now. Uh, because it's an affordable pickup, right? So, so that's not I wouldn't have cut there. that. I wouldn't have cut that cost. You would have you would you would have put it in at least on the upper levels. Yeah, well, well, I would you know first of all, so you can go from like the 1960s tailgates, which, which basically is a hinge, like on a door with, with like, a chain, with a chain where it just plops open and then it plops. You know, then you gotta you gotta, you gotta like, arr, close it right. Yeah, and that's very satisfying. So, so obviously that's as basic as it gets. Then you can go to the more modern ones, right, where, uh, you know, they open, but they're not dampened, but they, they, they actually have a little bit more engineering to them. Mm -hmm. then, then, of course, Honda up the game with the one that not only flops open, but also swings out, swings yeah. out, right? And then we got into the tailgate wars, and now, on like, like most many of the very expensive modern trucks, they're powered. Not only do they power lock, but they power open and sometimes even power close. Exactly, so you don't have to even touch it. So yeah. I, I would say that, you know, that, that, that it's probably a coil spring. Right, that lets you, that keeps it from like flopping down and mm -hmm. makes it lighter. I, I think I would have, I, I would have put that in. I think that that is a place. That, you know, if you're if you're using that um, bed a lot, that's a nice feature to have. I would say because you know, the tailgate can just flop down. It kind of you know is kind of jarring. But but if you look at the XL truck, this most affordable Maverick, it seemed like. <laughs> You know what it doesn't have? Right. The XL. Right. It doesn't have cruise control. Okay. In 2022, for this model, it doesn't have power mirrors. The mirrors are manual. It has power windows. So, uh, so, so, so it has a weird combination. So, so there's like this new way and this old way of doing business in the world right now. We're kind of, kind of in between it, right? Uh, so if you go buy, let's say, a Tesla, right? You're, you're going to get not only to buy it online and buy it from the manufacturer, but you're also pretty much going to get a vehicle that comes configured in one way with everything. And Tesla, don't get me wrong, Tesla does some does some cost cutting, you know, as well. So, for instance, one of the things that Tesla just cut out was they stopped using like LiDAR, basically um, radar to do proximity sensing, uh, and they only now use their cameras. And, and stereoscopic cameras aren't as good as little radar based. So, so and there's things. So I. I, I <laughs> I don't want to like like overly praise Tesla. So Tesla doesn't have things that like the Japanese are now and the Koreans are putting on all their vehicles, which is like cross traffic alert, where it'll break for you autonomously, or it'll let you know when there's like a little kid on a tricycle when you're backing up. These Next are things thing, yeah. the vehicle should have. But for the most part, everything else kind of comes standard on the car. And then there's the old way of doing it, which is like, you know, you buy the base truck and then they, they nickel and dime you for everything. And to me, that feels really like, like your dad's way of buying vehicles. You know, I, I don't want to be like, well, do I have to go up to the, you know, level blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, to get like a cruise control? You know, there's just some things, especially with the safety tech, that should be standard across the board. You shouldn't, whether it's a $20,000 truck or a $40,000 truck. Like, 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 you know, like, I think blind spot monitoring should be across the board. I, I'm just saying that mm -hmm. that's kind of where, where, and so, so, so it feels, so it this feels is a not, little, this yeah. is not it. Uh, but I think uh, you may appreciate this is because they also put the hybrid powertrain into this for 20 grand. 
So, so I, I think what Ford was trying to do, and I'm kind of reading between the lines, this is not an official Ford statement, but this Maverick truck had to be more affordable than the Ranger in a big way, right? Because if it was the same price as the Ranger, you might say, well, buy, why buy the Maverick? You know, why, why even bother with something smaller if I can get a Ranger and, you know, it's a body and frame pickup and it can do more, can go more off-road. Um, so they, so I, I'm, I'm assuming they did that for the entry level price. And it gets, and listen to this, on the way from uh, this one distillery place where they had a stop, not drinking, by the way. No, dr- no drinking. <laughs> just, just beautiful countryside. I'm, I'm drinking, but it's iced tea. <laughs> Even though, we, well, Ford said, uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna drive to a distillery and you know, uh, switch vehicles there. So we did. Can, can, uh, I, can I make a little interjection? Yeah. My favorite iced tea. I drink a lot of it. Is Lipton. And there's been some kind of a like a iced tea war recently here in Colorado. <laughs> I can no longer find Lipton uh, anywhere. Uh, There's I got a shortage a, of Lipton iced tea. It, 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 like overnight, like all the gas stations and all the um, grocery stores switched to Gold Peak. And I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a Lipton guy, uh, and I want my Lipton, but I don't know. You know, I don't know how that world works. If like Lipton stopped paying for shelf space, or if Gold Peak started paying for shelf space, but I can no longer find Lipton, Andre. It's, it, this, it's. I, I spent literally. This is crazy. I spent. Lit, you know, we have one vending machine in our offices, right? Yeah. And we have this cool guy who comes around and every couple of months fills it up. And he, you know, we, we had this massive text exchange where he's going from grocery store to grocery store trying to get us Lipton. And he, he was, can't find it. He, he finally found it, but he had to double the cost. Because it got that expensive. So whatever is happening, Lipton, please get get the tea back out there. This is not brought to you by Lipton. This is not brought to you. This is a Roman <laughs> ramp. All right, let, let me let me keep my little hard nosed uh, reporter hat on. Okay. You don't like the hybrid? No, no. Okay. I just think it's unobtainium. I think we're back, you know, to that moment where uh, it's like you know the base truck that they put out there as being affordable is unobtainium, right? Uh, and especially with the Maverick, uh, are they building the hybrids? Well, so as far as I can tell, the first ones are going to be the turbocharged ones, which are once again more expensive. Um, not a huge more expensive, but starting at around twenty-two grand, twenty-three grand uh, with destination. Uh, and the hybrids are slightly later introduction, I believe. Yeah, and then then so, of course the dealer is going to going to basically not only order them with every option. So while you're saying 23, realistically, you could be looking at a thirty to $40,000 truck. Well, they max out at about 36, yeah. Because market adjustment. Well, they can, they can market up, absolutely. Right, and that, yeah. that, that's what I mean. I mean, I'm so f- tired and so frustrated right now with, with prices of new and used vehicles, right? And, and I think, here's an interesting thing. I think what's happening is that, that like the, the, the dealers are, are being so like smart that they're actually turning people off to actually buying cars. Because what ends up, there's this interesting phenomenon that happens, right? Say the manufacturer says, uh, you know, vehicle X, right, is 50,000. Uh, and then because you can't get it. People are buying used cars, right? And so at some point, when the used car market gets so high, and this happens with the Tacoma, for instance, that it's almost cheaper to buy the, the new car than the used car, people just drop out of the market. They just say to themselves, this is crazy, right? Why I'm would I buy- fix my old vehicle. Yeah, why, why, why would I buy a used Tacoma if it costs as much as a new Tacoma? I can't get a new Tacoma. I'm done with this. I don't want to even deal with it. And that's, I've seen, I'm seeing a lot of surveys where, where people are just dropping out of the market and they're saying, you know what, we're going to live with what we're going to live. With. And once again, it's like it's like they're being greedy or clever by half, and, and it's actually costing them sales, right? At, at the end of the day, like Ford and Chevy, not Ferrari, right? They, <laughs> they don't make money by not selling trucks, yeah. Or in Ferrari's case, cars. Yeah. And, and I think we're to the point now where, where you know, even though there's a lot of demand, a lot of people are just like throwing up their hands and saying, I'm done. Hey, let me know in the comments below. Are you, are you feeling that way? You know, my mom is looking for a new car right now and I'm completely like, like dumbfounded by it. Dumbfounded. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. just, you know, wait, wait six months, you know, wait it out. This, this is, this is a really bad time to buy anything right now. It's maybe a good time to sell if you, ha- if you have a good vehicle to sell, if you have multiple vehicles. Yeah, it's one of those like, you know, it's like, it's like when the market is high for home, you, you can sell your home for a lot more. But, but where are you going to live? Where do you live? You, know, you can sell your <laughs> truck for, <laughs> for more, but what are you going to drive? Exactly. So, so this Maverick, um, 
so a couple more points. So the base one, and I think where the market is going is also like order not go to the dealer, right? So you pre-order it, you select it, they will build your uh, configuration just the way you want it instead of going to the dealer and haggling over what's on the lot, right? So uh, maybe that's where Ford kind of also wants to take it. You know, you spoke with Ram CEO, that's kind of was the some of the notion that yeah, they're you know, trying to move away from basically the days when a big car and truck lot had hundreds of vehicles and you came and picked the one you wanted and, drove and yeah, there were discounts because they're, they're going more european you right know, no more cash on the hood we're, we're not we're not overbuilding so then we have to deeply discount what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to you know we're going to take orders and we're going to fulfill those orders but but that would be great if like if you're in a bronco you could actually put an order in and get a bronco but you can't no you or, have to wait months or years yeah or you know rivian same thing so so yeah it sounds good hey we'll take your order and we'll build it but the once again you're not making any money by not selling trucks and i think at some point this is going to start to really bite so i think initially what happened was you know they sold out of the of the inexpensive stuff and then they said you know we only have limited amount of chips and, and supply chain issues so if we're going to sell stuff we're going to sell expensive stuff but then you kind of paint yourself into a corner where people are like guys you know <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking out a 20 year loan just on, to, on this truck just to yeah. buy you know just to buy the King Ranch version because I can't get the uh, XL totally um, so I, when when driving the hybrid so first of all uh, quite nice system because I haven't driven the escape hybrid before driving the Maverick hybrid uh, very uh, well done system it's just from drivability standpoint the truck is pretty quiet they call it power split so basically, it's a system where um, you can use the electric motor to completely fully drive the vehicle, or it will go through the engine. Uh, there's a CVT, which is another weird thing. For how, how was the CVT? Well, on maximum acceleration, it's droney. Mm. You know, you put your foot down, and I did uh, several zero to 60s uh, accelerations. Yes, it's a typical experience where it's droney and just eh. well, What was your zero to 60? So in the hybrid, it surprised me. It was about 8.2 seconds, okay. 0 to 60 in Nashville. So this is not sea level, but it's also not mountains. So, so we're talking 9.2 up here? Yeah, probably. It's a little pokey. Uh, so, but I thought because of 40 MPG in the city, it would be way slower. Okay. But it wasn't. Okay. You know, it was... It it's, was it's drivable. Yeah, it was kind you of common. You any stop by And, races. you know, they're, they're saying 40 MPG. I got 44 MPGs wow. going from the distillery to back to Nashville. So uh, you, this is Did you fill it up with Jim Bean or gasoline? No, and I did not verify this at the fuel stop. Um, it's just what the truck told me, about 44 MPGs. Combine the electric and the gas power together to give you maximum power. And it's really well done. It's pretty quiet on the highway in you know, traffic. You know what the comment's going to be, Andre? What? Jim Bean's in Kentucky, not in Tennessee. I, I have no clue where. I'm just, it's a joke. I'm, I don't know where uh, Jim Bean is. So still. we went to... Uh, Jack Daniels? What's, what's Le it? Leapers Distillery. Don't know. I'm not a whiskey uh, guy. No, I don't. I've never heard of it. But Tim, you can help us out. Uh, Tim knows. Uh, Tim He's, from Tim. Pickup Truck uh, SCV you, Talk. Yeah, you, 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 got, you're, you enjoy um, your whiskey. Um, so if you know where... Le Le heard, leapers yeah, yeah well he was also at the he's, program he's more of an aficionado than yeah one. so tim let us know if you like that stuff or not at the end of the day uh i drove several of them i also drove an xlt we have to talk about off-roading a little bit before we talked about the hummer because that's a whole different ball game uh but i i thought it drove well it drove small i felt nimble i could dart around traffic and, um and you're tall t you're six three did you have enough room in the truck? Yeah, I did. Oh, uh, driver's area was perfect. Uh, even if I was kind of would move up just an inch, I could sit behind myself. My knees would touch the seat in mm. front of me in the back, but my headroom was perfect. And the back seat was it like bolt upright or was it comfortable? No, no, it was actually leaned a little. That's great. So I, I think they spent a lot of you know time to actually make it you know. Pretty nice, comfortable runabout. The bed is easy to reach into. Um, it doesn't have any other tricks other than uh, there is an inverter, 400 watts only. Yeah, so you know, now that you've got that hybrid, can you, uh, 400, 400 kilowatts. watt is like, is like drinking out of, you know, a straw. It's, yeah. so, it's so small. Yeah. You can't power much with it. Yeah, you could power maybe... Um, Remember we've tried that. Remember when we went up uh, and had that Hummer and tried to do a Christmas video? We tried try to power those Christmas lights up 
we went up into yes, the mountains yes. and we took a bunch of lights and we tried to decorate a tree and it could barely power those lights. Forget about powering something like an electric <laughs> chainsaw. It's, it, you need your hybrid. You need that one of the hybrid. Yeah, totally. So this is not it. So yeah, it was comfortable, nice. Um, they have an FX4 version for off-roading, but you know what? Um, their off-road trail uh, was a dirt road. Mm. So the Maverick is not truly, and they didn't claim it to be, you know, this off-road monster, right? It has 8.6 inches of ground clearance, um, not huge ground clearance, and it's pretty long, so. And no low range, right? No low range. It's just um, either an 8-speed automatic in the turbo version or CVT in the other. Oh, you know what the hybrid does not have? What is that? It does not have a reverse gear. Really? So, yeah, I, d I didn't realize this until I was talking to the engineers. So how do you back to, up? To go in reverse in the Maverick Hybrid, you put it in reverse, and it backs up using electricity only. And then I asked, well, what if the battery is low? Yeah, that's cool. That's a trick. That's a <laughs> what if the trick? battery is low? But uh, they said they always keep a, a kind of a safety margin in the battery, so you always have power. And the electric motor, and I asked, is strong enough to back up a trailer? Because I was like, well, what if you're loaded, right? Can you back up still? And they said yes. I, you know, that, that's kind of like, uh, th that is trouble in the long run, right? I think initially it's probably good. Uh, but like eight years from now when that, when that battery <laughs> is, is going low. <laughs> yeah, so one, one of the dirty secrets of the electric car world that uh, nobody actually talks about is that like the, the, the uh, is it decay? What's the proper word? Like the decline of an electric battery. And, and you know, Teslas have been around a long enough time now, or, or, or you can kind of you can kind of tell how much basic functionality it's using, and it's usually like one percent a year. For the, or it's like, kind of decreasing. Yeah, in its, it's decreasing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's Tesla. It, it, you know, various uh, types of battery compounds have different rates. Um, also, I think. You know, like the iPhone lasts exactly a year for 24 hours, and then after that, <laughs> when the new one comes out, somehow that battery mysteriously starts to last like, like like 12 hours and eight hours. Yeah. Anyway, uh, usually, at least the guys who know about this stuff have told me that after about eight years, uh, it kind of falls off a cliff. So the so battery it's slow, 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 slow decay, slow, and then yeah. eight to ten years just goes boom, where it becomes you know, almost brickable. So what happens eight years from now, where where that safety margin is the entire margin? And you cannot back up. So that's a good question. I don't know. I'm sure somebody will figure it out eight years from now. And there may be new batteries but, you know, in the future where you could just swap them out. So that's, so that's cool. That is really cool. So how about the non-hybrid? Has it reverse gear? Yeah, it does. Because okay. it has a traditional eight-speed automatic, and then it has a reverse gear, so, obviously. So anything so. else fancy in the bed, like lighting or, you know? So they have two. Uh, they provide two connectors for 12-volt. Uh, so you don't have to splice wires. You okay. know, a lot of people, they they researched it and they splice wires. Like, remember our old F-150, somebody spliced some lights in there and nothing ever worked correctly after that. So they provide you actually with two connections where you can, not splicing, but I can actually plug in uh, an additional light, an additional maybe... Uh, they can say um, additional air compressor, maybe you can power. And, so, and how, about, so, how about for that crazy guy out there who wants to stick a gooseneck in? <laughs> <laughs> no, you cannot gooseneck it. No. Did you see that email we got? Somebody did a gooseneck on a full-size truck on a... <laughs> uh, well, which, which truck was it? Yeah, well, first we had a gooseneck. Was it a gooseneck on the fifth, old like Ram? Like a fifth wheel? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the fifth, there was a fifth wheel, yeah. There's always somebody who's like, I wonder if I could... <laughs> Put a fifth wheel in the Maverick. <laughs> well, 15 horses with this. <laughs> well, you could maybe on your farm at two miles an hour, but no. All right, so... Uh, so um, Bed lighting is there. How about like tie downs? Lots of tie downs. Okay. Yeah, they have lots of options. Um, they say, you know, you can configure it yourself. You know how you can, you know, do this kind of DIY, put, you know, two by sixes or two by fours in there and kind of construct your own s situation. Uh, so subdividers. They, have, they have slots, right, for, for two by yeah, fours. And this is not new. Right. You know, uh, trucks have been doing it for years. So, um, so that, that's, but that's as fancy as it gets. Accessories? So, Is there a line of accessories? Yeah, yeah, there are, there are. So I saw accessories, something like, well, obviously tunnel covers. There's also a bed rack. Of course, you have to put a rooftop tent on top of it, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what everybody does. So yeah, play, uh, they set up to about a hundred accessories. I think you can do. Uh, they also have three D printed accessories for the interior where you can kind of um, order them from Ford and the little trash cans, little cup holders. Uh, really cool interior, actually. So who do you think is going to buy this, Andre? 
I think a variety of people. Okay. They were saying, you know, it's more for the city dweller, maybe even a little bit more skewed toward female side of the uh, customer base. Uh, I think it could be uh, applicable to almost any age group, right? I can see my dad buying something like this where he wants to run to the mountains, not doing anything hard off-road uh, or run to the Home Depot or whatever home improvement store and uh, here and there. And Or I could see a college student buying it. So so let's talk about more off-roading. Is there an FX4 package? Yeah, there is. Um, and also- What does that get you? Skid plates, bigger, better, more brawny tires? A little bit. So yeah. just a- Slightly bigger Wild Peak uh, uh, all-terrain tire, um, no no locker, of course, no low range, a uh, couple of skid plates, t- tow hooks in the front, which is important, but not the red, they're black. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> bummer. <laughs> yes. A- and then also uh, the towing package and the FX4 package have additional engine cooling. Um, uh, the towing package has an additional transmission cooling. And also the towing package gives you a slightly different rear axle ratio so you can get the load moving um, a little bit better. So, and decals for the FX4. But no tremor yet. There's no tremor and version. Did, did I say Raptor? There's no Raptor, there's no word of uh, Maverick Raptor. N- no. Warthog? No oh, Warthogs, okay, no. Okay, okay. All right. So that's about it. All right. So I, I think it could be um, actually applicable to a variety of different people from a variety of different uh, lifestyles. All right, well, let's build our dream one, right? So let's ditch both the CVT <laughs> and the turbo, and let's uh, let's put let's what would you put into it? Let's put the uh, what, what does Ford have that you can put into? It? Obviously, you can be out there screaming. I hear it now, Coyote, but that's too much. But how about the two seven? That would be great, three hundred horsepower. So slap a two oh seven my, in there. Oh my God, yeah. Um, give give it give it uh, a Raptor. Let's say active Fox suspension. Uh, Three inch lift at least, and you gotta be rolling on thirty threes. Can you slam thirty threes under that thing? I think you're going too far. Yeah. Uh, I don't think this vehicle was meant for that because the suspension, uh, you know, doesn't have a lot of travel. It's independent. Well, so we're fixing that. We're gonna lift it. So you, you're gonna lift it complete? Yeah. yeah. Do do completely new control arms and a arms and all this stuff. Yeah, so you could. Somebody's gonna do it. Y- yeah, you could. Yeah. You know, uh, our friends at Five Star Tuning yeah. actually. Um, have a solution for the two liter yeah. tuning. So because it's very similar to the Bronco Sport and very similar to the Escape. So they have a solution if you want more power, uh, you can go that way. Uh, but I, I think if you really want to build a Tremor or a Raptor, just start with a Ranger. The, the problem with, with, with doing that for me, it, uh, this is a truck I want, right? This is my dream truck. And for the last 10 years, I've wanted somebody to build a traditional body on frame truck truck, not a unibody truck that's based on an Escape. Not, you know, a, a, a so two like a little, a, a little pickup. A real, you know, body on frame, ladder frame, box ladder frame truck uh, that you could actually do this to and turn it into like a mini Raptor. Because I love, I love, it's weird. I love things that are really small and I love things that are really big, right? So like I love my little, the little electric mini that we have and I love the TRX. It's a weird thing. The mm-hmm. stuff in the middle, not so much. Uh, so I would love actually somebody to build like a real, and, and yeah, yeah, sure. You could, I'm sure you could get bumpers for it, you know, that are wind ready at some point. Some aftermarket people will probably do it. If it's very popular, it's going to get, you know, much quicker there, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rear bumpers, you know, mm-hmm. wheels, tires, shocks, but uh, it just, it feels like, you're you're kind of putting a round peg in a square hole with this truck. A little bit, because it's also, I mean, it's got a good unibody chassis. It's not a ladder frame, you know, it, it's not. And so, so it probably does have some of those limitations eventually. But, but I think if you drive it, I, 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 eventually, I want to see, you know, hear your opinion about this. It's kind of a nice little runabout. And yeah, off roading, it needs a little bit more. If you want to go off road more seriously, you need more ground clearance you need probably bigger tires uh, to do that. Yeah, and how about availability? Uh, so available now. Yeah, at the uh, dealerships? You can get, uh, well. <laughs> I say that with a snicker, of course. Uh, uh, our local <laughs> dealer has three of them on order. Okay. So they're not here yet. Uh, and I did air quotes. Um, and then the hybrid should be available soon, not maybe immediately, uh, but yeah. Uh, actually, our one of my friends has a, uh, got a shipping date for a Maverick, so so they're coming out right now. What was the date? How far in the future? I think it was October. That's not yeah, bad. Yeah. yeah. So so actually this year. Yeah. No, this month. This month. Yeah. 
Well, Andre, I got to tell you, uh, thank you for going down to Tennessee and you know getting us the full scoop on the new uh, Maverick. Uh, I can't wait to drive it. I love sitting in it. I was really impressed that it was big enough for the two of us. We had the engineer we sat in was even taller than you. It was like six five. <laughs> we had three of us in that thing, and it was comfortable, which is. Yeah. You know, which is one of the issues that people have with small trucks, right? That I mean, the great thing about trucks is that they're great cross-country, they're great family vehicles because they have a lot of room, and, and you're losing that usability, utility, when you go small. But yeah, you do. Ford has managed to, you know, make one of these vehicles that's bigger on the inside than on the outside. Yeah, I don't know if I want to, you know, go on a 500-mile trip with the entire family. I mean, I think they'll be kind of crammed in the back seat. But for shorter trips, you know, city driving, I think it's really perfect. So last question before we get to the Hummer. Um, after leaving and you're on the flight, coming home, right, was there a part of you that wanted it a lot, a little, or you were like, hey, I'll keep my uh, full-size truck? Where, where were you at? Because you uh, keep – Andre bought a new truck, so he's got a new truck. Yeah. He's got the current Ford hybrid. Uh, F-150. F-150, yeah. yeah. Um, so where were you on that kind of like – is there a part of you that's like, huh, I might want to trade mine in? Or is there a part of you that's like, you know, I'll take a pass? Or was there a part of you that's like, it could be useful but not for me? Where were you at? Uh, I was kind of in the latter section. I was at, I, I would say it would – I predicted it's going to be popular. Okay. It wasn't for me. You, as you said, I have a 6,000-pound boat. Uh, I bring a lot of, uh, when I go camping, I bring a lot of stuff with me. You know, we have tents, chairs, um, you know, little tents, uh, you know, little expandable roof. Um, I, this was not for me. A crazy cat? A crazy cat with me. <laughs> so, so, so this is not for me. I can see my dad buying one. Okay. Um, just to run around town, you know, go in the mountains a little bit and uh, go maybe skiing or something like this. So it wasn't for me. So I'm, I'm uh, really looking forward to like putting it up against uh, the Santa Cruz and comparing those two for those of you who are in the market for you know a new or maybe even against the Ranger. I think you know, Tommy calls can... it a trucklet, little trucklet, a trucklet. <laughs> All right, so Andre, I I, I, I was very um, thrilled. Uh, thank you, GMC, uh, for allowing me to be one of the first people, journalists outside of the company, to actually drive the new Hummer EV. Uh, pickup. Now we're, you know, there's two, right? There's the, the the SUV, and then there's the pickup truck. So I got to drive the pickup truck. Uh, they flew me uh, to Detroit. Uh, they took me to their proving grounds, uh, where they basically taped up my phone camera because you know there's all these concept vehicles running around. So and they, you haven't been to their GM. Proving I've never ground. been to Milford. It's okay. really it's really interesting, and they, they have. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll get to yeah, it because yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what happened. So, you know, there were only a handful of us. I think there were four journalists. Craig Cole was there, who kind of become a friend of mine. If you guys like seeing that, uh, met, met another guy, nice guy uh, from The Drive uh, who, who was just starting out in the business. So it was great chatting with him. Uh, but anyway, so we, we show up. They take us uh, to their kind of – they have like two parts, right, of the Milford Proving Grounds. They have the dirt part and then they have the road part. Uh, and then there were, I think, five or six uh, of the trucks lined up, um, and they were still engineering prototypes. Uh, so some of them had, you know, gear in them, some of them didn't. Uh, they gave us a quick overview, and the most interesting thing in the overview was that they told us that, that they were given, which is very rare, so Al Oppenhauser, Op- Oppenha- uh, Oppen- Oppen- Oppenhauser. Oppenhauser. Yeah. yeah, he used to do the Camaro, we know him, he's chief engineer. He said, uh, you know, he was given the mandate to build the most capable, the best off-road truck ever uh and a green full, full stop full stop and a green you know brand new fresh fields do what you need to do start from the ground up and budget is no no object which it which it probably shouldn't be because the truck is one hundred and twelve thousand. <laughs> but i think also part of the story is that they were given like almost no time right and, because and zero time so they said they had to cut 117 weeks out of the development so usually 117 weeks weeks yeah usually it's it's uh, uh like a four and a half five year development process from like you know when you he said when you first draw it on the napkin <laughs> to when it actually goes on sale yeah. at the dealership right uh, they were tasked to cut out 117 weeks and of so course like in half cut yeah, it in half of course this is an all electric truck so I, I should say that both both of them so basically not quite in half but almost right by a third, at least. Uh, and th- they they show some interesting ways of doing that. So the first edition, which is coming out, comes out only in one spec, only in one color. And, and that part of the reason for that is because they wanted to simplify, out, simplify, simplify yeah. it and yeah. cut out all this. So, that, you know, it's only white with, like, black accents. 
Uh, you, you have no choice in, you know, the, the the stuff that it comes in. Like I was saying, like a more modern way to, to buy things. So you basically they threw the it's kitchen sink. It's fully loaded. Yeah, they yeah. threw the kitchen sink at it. You get every every conceivable option. Um, anyway, so, so that was their mandate. Uh, and then the cool part about it was that they actually let me drive it. On their proving ground. So, uh, their so proving how ground. was it designed? Were you driving it on road, off road? Yeah. So, so they were really clever. They they did a whole bunch of different things. So I'll go through them and I'll kind of give you my impressions. So first we get on a dirt road. I get in, in the truck, uh, and because it's the proving ground, we had to wear masks. I've got a video of this, which hopefully debuted yesterday. If if we if got the video, because they didn't let me shoot it, so they had their own videographers. They had GoPros on us. I couldn't use mine. So by now we would have had it edited. And published it on deadline, but I hope we published it by the time this airs because we don't have the video as, as, as of this taping because they, they had to take it for me. Uh, anyway, so g- get in the car with one of the engineers, great guy, uh, and then um, I think the, another another engineer, maybe it was a PR guy, was in the back seat. Uh, and the first thing you're struck with when you get in this vehicle is just how uh, big and square and tall it is. It really does kind of, um, there's two things that it captures. First, if you've seen it in person, you'll know that like their design language or kind of their inspiration was the moonshot, right? It's a moonshot. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you look at the speaker covers, it's got uh, an outline of the topographical map of the moon. With Say, a little moon boot, right? There's a little moon boot that's <laughs> hidden in the dashboard. Yes. The, 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 you know, the, the, the rubber mats also have the landscape of the moon in them. So it was, it was a moonshot. So there's that theme. And even the color white, it feels like it's something designed by NASA. But then it's a very square-jawed, very uh, muscular vehicle. So it does kind of carry that original military heritage of the Hummer. Uh, and so they did do a good job of channeling their inner Hummer when they when they brought it out. So we had the H2, right? Right. Did it feel like the same yes. proportions? Yes. Yeah. You, okay. Yeah, you've owned the H2. So yeah. it, if you had a Hummer, you'll feel at home in this, right? Uh, it's, it's almost a square box, right? In some ways, it feels almost wider than it is longer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's very tall. It rides from the factory. This is cool, on 35s, uh, uh, but they said you could put 37s on if you want to. Without modifications? Without modifications. Interesting. So it won't rub with 37s, but it comes on 35s. Okay. Um, and then, you know, you get behind the wheel, and then GM has done a really good job of cleaning up their interface. So there's a screen in front of you, and there's a big screen next to you. So two screens. And I like that. I, I'm really getting tired of, like... like I know, seven I, screens? Yeah, I know. I know the... <laughs> Like the Grand Wagon here has like seven screens, and the Porsche Taycan has like fifteen. Uh, yeah, it, it's too much. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and there's this really fine line between like real controls and virtual controls. And I think they they hit that right. And of course, it's got a newest version of uh, their infotainment, which actually was very understandable. So you've got little icons like off road. Um, WTF, you know, which is <laughs> their fast Watts mode. For, Watts for freedom, <laughs> which is their fast mode. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, and, and it's very easy to get comfortable. And then the coolest thing, once you're sitting in it, is it's got uh, panels, just like freedom panels, except they have uh, plastic um, f- um, inserts for the, instead of glass. So they're very light. I asked him how heavy they were, and he said they were probably about 10 pounds each. Hmm. And you can take, the, there's four panels, and you can take them off, and it's got a frunk that electronically opens, and you can stack them up in the frunk so you could carry all your panels. All four of them? All four of them. Okay. And then, then usually between the panels, there's like a little piece of... Piece like of, a T-top or something? Yeah, like a T-top, but that also removes. Okay. So And then the rear window also slides all the way down like a Toyota Tundra. Really? Yeah. Okay. So so you've got this very open-air convertible feel. So basically you have you know two big open sections with kind of a roll bar going down the middle. Uh, and then you can roll so down. So it's kind of open air almost. Not yeah. quite a Jeep or a Bronco. Not but quite, but almost there. Okay. Yeah, so it's it, it feels... Feels very open, so you get behind, and it's got a traditional a lever that you put into drive. Now I asked him what the gear ratio was, and he said it's an electric motor, so it's infinite. <laughs> so there is really no okay. gear, no gear ratio. So we get in the thing, we get on the dirt road. He goes, the first thing you got to do is you got to floor it on dirt. On dirt, yeah. Now keep in oh, mind okay. that it's got a you know a thousand horsepower. And you know they, they use this weird torque number, but basically well, like eleven thousand five hundred yeah, right? or but something. But basically, in, in the in the regular torque world, it's like twelve hundred pound foot of torque, right? Okay, which is a lot. <laughs> well, it's more than the diesel. Any yeah. heavy duty diesel, <laughs> it's a lot. Pick up. So I'm like, you sure? And they're like, yeah, floor it. And we weren't in like the special mode. We were just in the regular, you know, driving Mo- normal mode, normal mode. So I floor it, and next thing I know, I'm like accelerating. I'm getting tunnel vision. I'm going sideways. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my god! But wait, wait a minute. But but this is not a lightweight vehicle. 
No. This this vehicle, and they published one of these numbers on their one of their guides. It's curb weight of over nine thousand pounds. Yeah, I asked. They, they they haven't confirmed that. Okay. So we're, we're guessing. But so I about, asked, they, that's what we think about they, nine thousand. They didn't. They didn't give me a lot of numbers, and we'll get to that. I'll tell you about the numbers that we don't know. Right? Wow. So we, we, we I don't, is, did they publish 200 kilowatt hour battery? No, they never said. They never they said ju- the size of battery. They just said 350 miles of range. range. So we're yeah. thinking it's a, you know, which is double that of a Tesla Model S Plaid. That's a heavy battery. That's a big one. <laughs> it's a big one, yeah. yeah. Uh, so now I'm going, you know. You're like, going sideways on dirt. <laughs> dirt, yeah. Uh, and keep in mind, it's a, it's a tri-engine. So it's got, here's how it works. It's got two engines on the rear axle. Motors. Motors, sorry, tri-motor. Okay. okay. <laughs> like, the, like the old... Ford airplane, so it's got two in the back and one in the front. Okay. Uh, and I said, does it have a rear locker? And they said, yes, virtual. Uh, and I said, what the hell's a virtual <laughs> rear locker? And basically, they can make those two rear motors in sync. In sync. So yeah. that it's, and, and then it's the, re- the front locker, where the other motor is, is a tra- traditional locker. Interesting. So you could lock everything up like you would a Wrangler or a Bronco. So basically, you can, but but you can do a lot more than that because obviously these are electric motors, so you can send power where you need them. And I said, why didn't you go with like motors in the wheels? I asked him that question. He said, he said that the that the, that the value of that is not it was outweighed by the complexity. Hmm. So he said they looked at that, you know, doing a quad motor, one in each wheel, but they said it was too complicated and you really didn't need all that complexity for what they were trying to achieve. Interesting, because there could be other benefits to that, but I'm not a GM engineer. I'm not a GM. I'm okay. just repeating what they said. So okay, I asked. cool. So then I'm driving it along, um, and you can feel the weight. I mean, it's a heavy. She's a heavy girl. Okay. She's a heavy girl. This is a Hummer. Or a heavy guy. I don't want to be sexist. Okay. I'm both. Heavy guy, guy her gal. Uh, and uh, then we drive it up this very steep hill, and they say, stop on the top of the hill, and then he hits the cameras. And this thing uh, has <laughs> 18 different camera views, which I think is the most out of any. Okay. And, um, you know, the bottom is pretty much completely flat, completely protected. He said there's like five layers of protection between the bottom and the battery, which will be important in a second and then he hits the bottom view and they have uh, two little cameras which are also protected uh, one face is forward and one face is backwards so you can see you can see like I'm on top of the cylinder I don't know what's underneath me there could have been like a sheer drop yeah but with the little camera you look down and you can see that you're not going to drop so this is not on the on the, there's not the camera on the in the grill the, I or think maybe there is on, in the grill. There's also, but, I'm saying, there's but there's also underneath, kind of where the pumpkin would be. If you imagine where a traditional pumpkin would be, that's on the where, axle. Okay, that's where the cam- that's where the camera is. But it's okay. flat, so there's a little protected camera. And I'm like, I'm like, we're about to hit some mud. And I'm like thinking, and before I even say it, he's like, let me show you, and pushes a button that it squirts. There's a squirter <laughs> on the underneath cameras. <laughs> One facing forward, one facing back, backwards. So that's why you pay one hundred twelve thousand yeah. dollars. Like what other what other vehicle has like four Under squirters? Body. Underbody camera squirters, right? Because yes. usually you get the two in the front and then one in the back. But right, no one has all that. Yeah. Okay. So then then we go over this big hill and then we're doing a little bit of off roading and it's very good, obviously. Oh, uh, and I asked, uh, what's the highest? What do you think is the highest amount of ground clearance at its high? Because it's got air suspension, so you can yes, you can you raise can. it. They call it extract mode. So if you get stuck, there's a special so extra, there's a special additional height. additional mode which gives you I think over 30 inches well, of water fording. What what do you think is the? And he said the battery is by the way pretty much perfectly sealed. So if you do go into water, it should be fine. Should well, I'm saying uh, it should be okay, fine. Okay, He's okay, it okay. will will be fine. The engineers fine. Uh, so so I at its I, highest I think height, I remember this. Was it like 14 inches? No, more. 16? 16 inches of ground clearance in the extract mode. Okay, but but you cannot really drive. Is that just for very slow crawling? Or you can how does drive, it work? yeah, you can drive. You just don't have much suspension because you've completely Max, maxed, maxed out the out. air suspension, yeah. So what in that mode? Did you try that mode? I didn't try it, but okay. but I was I was curious about it. Okay, so okay. then then we go back on the dirt road. So now we're doing a little bit of off roading. It's it's fine, you know. It's doing everything, uh, and then we get uh, back, and he's like, "Let me show you uh, the turning circle because it does have ten degrees, Andre." of rear wheel steering. So the most I've driven in the past was the latest S class. I drove that. That had nine degrees of rear wheel steering. This has ten degrees. So it can also do the crab mode. We'll get to that. Okay. So 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 you're doing tight turns. So so was it actually working? Yeah. So what you what you can do is um, it's ultimately 
adaptable. So you could go either in phase or out of phase, right? So out of phase, you can see my hands is like that. In phase is where they turn the same way. Mm -hmm. So when you're out of phase, when, you know, the front turn left and the rear turns, in, well, let's say when the front turns out and the rear turns in, right? Right. It gets you uh, one of the tightest turning circles. They said it, the turning circle is as tight as a Chevy Bolt. A small car. Yeah, which is 35, no, 37 feet for the truck. That's and, that's really important because for a truck that size, yeah, it has to be maneuverable. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah, for 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 a truck that size, it has to be maneuverable. So thirty seven feet for the truck and uh, uh, SUV is thirty five feet. It's got a little shorter wheelbase, mm -hmm. so even shorter if you're going to get the SUV, which is pretty amazing. So that, that so basically, I, I was able to almost like turn in place, and then they then they were like, okay, let, let us show you the crab walk, right? And that is crazy weird, dude. So <laughs> crab walk is basically in phase, right? Uh -huh. So both wheels. You know what it feels like? The closest. Remember when we've done some like like uh, uh, ice skating ring testing where we go on an ice skating ring, right? And you're uh, like trying to go around a cone and the manufacturer of the tire is trying to show you like how good the ice and snow tires versus so imagine you're on the ice skating rink and you you have like an all-season tire and you make a turn and the vehicle starts Just, to go sideways yeah. that's exactly what it feels like <laughs> but you're not but on you're, ice but, but you're not on ice and you can control it yeah right with, with, with on ice you could do whatever you do right. keep going sideways so yeah it's really crazy so huh. and the idea is like you know if, if there's a rock in the way instead of going around it you can kind of just the whole vehicle moves, shifts sideways, right? It doesn't go straight and then around it. It just shifts sideways and then shifts back. But how is it, do you think it's going to be useful in like in Moab, in the real world? Or I don't is know. it just kind I, of a trick? I was doing it on, uh, on a dirt road. It looks cool. And I, the, the, the biggest question I had for him is, does it help with towing? Because, you know, towing is always tricky, right? Uh, and he said, yeah, it makes towing easier. Because if the rear wheels can also steer, it gives you much more, more precision, yeah. more precision yeah. and much more capability in terms of, because I, I, asked, I asked, I said, hey, Andre has a boat, you know, trying to go down the dock that could be kind of, you know, tricky sometimes. He goes, yeah, this is much easier. You know, and I actually, I remember I w flew out for ZF uh, factory testing with four-wheel steering. Yeah. And actually their system is on this truck, maybe another generation of that system. Uh, but they told me, um, when you're towing on the highway in their, one of their previous generations of their system, the four-wheel steering can also make it more stable. You know, because the whole truck, you know, it has a stability control system and it kind of uses the rear tires to also kind of even out some of the sway. So that could be very interesting. Yeah. So, so then we do the, you know, the four-wheel steering, which was freaky. It's, it's the freakiest thing I've ever done in a vehicle. It just feels so weird to have a vehicle basically go forward and sideways at the same time. And you can go, you, you can kind of dance down the road so you can go left, right, left, right. And the vehicle doesn't sway, right? Usually when you do that, it, you, uh, you'd have like this left to right sway and this is perfectly level and you're just going. That is, must be weird. Yeah, it's pretty weird. Uh, and then we went rock crawling. Really? Yeah. So okay. they, they put it in, there's like a rock crawl mode. Obviously, there's different modes. Uh, and that was a little tricky because um, it's one-footed rock crawling. So basically, it's either throttle on or throttle off. So when you put throttle on, and I think the throttle was just a little too sensitive yet. So I was having a hard time controlling it. So uh, it, it felt like it needed like a different curve on the throttle when you're in that rock crawling mode. So when you're pushing, pushing, pushing. But right now, it was almost too much on and too much off. So it was a little jerky? Yeah, it was a little times? jerky. Okay. Uh, and I felt like I would have loved to see a little bit more pedal travel, uh, but we we we, <laughs> we slammed down into some rocks, and the engineers were like, "Cool, this is fine." And I was like, "That." But it sounded not. Yeah, it sounded. Fine. Not, didn't, and they said, "There's nothing you're going to break underneath the thing," and you know, if, and if you know, published reports are right, if we're right, and it does weigh nine thousand pounds. It's one of those vehicles that, that, you know, you're more likely to break the rock than you are to break the truck. <laughs> so it's literally a rock crusher. It's a, the, a rock at, crusher. At this yeah. time. Okay. Yeah, so, so, but it was just a, one little, like, like you know, we were done with it. Like a like rock pile or yeah, something? Like a, yeah, like in 10 seconds. So um, that one is, the jury's still out on that one, but I felt like it was, it was the throttle response was So it's, it abrupt. sounds like a software change. I'm sure. I mean, yeah. if they could change this uh, thr the throttles uh, programming, they can and they, they were, and, they, and they were right, you know, I mean, with... Three electric motors, you can appropriate power wherever you need them. So it should be much better, right? Because right now, the way that most systems work is if a wheel starts to spin, it's just brake torquing, right? They just break the spinning wheel, yeah. which sends power to the wheel that has traction. Here, you could be much more sophisticated. It's true vectoring, right? Vectoring, you could, yeah. you could, you could send up. 
You could send power to any corner you want. Right? Yeah, real like off-road vectoring. Yeah, you could do with this. All right, and then they, they took me on the high-speed oval. Okay, on their banked oval. Yeah, on their banked cool. oval. But because apparently they they were uh, a little afraid of journalists going too fast, uh, uh, they uh, switched drivers. So I, I wasn't driving at this point. So they, 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 the engineer got in the driver's seat, okay. and I was passengering. Uh, and uh, here's the funny part. So they they got together with like a Hollywood special effects company and when you put it to WTF mode, what's the freedom mode, what, what ends up happening is before you accelerate, um, you know, get the full acceleration, uh, it, it does a bunch of things, right? So there's this graphic that, that comes to life, like you're about to go in the screen or something? Yeah, in the screen, the big screen, like you're about to take off into space, right? And then uh, this like this music, this like loud sound starts to build. And you know how the, the GM vehicles have those seats that vibrate when you're backing up? Oh yeah, sometimes it can be very surprising. Yeah, so it starts to vibrate your seat. So it's like you're taking off in a rocket. So you've got this <laughs> okay. visual, you've got the audio, and then you've got the, the seat starts to vibrate, and then it says, press hard on pedal, on brake, press hard on the accelerator, let go of brake, and then it just shoots off like a 9,000 pound vehicle shouldn't. It's pretty <laughs> crazy, dude. So, so zero to 60, they're saying in about three seconds. But were you able to measure that or no, verify I, I that? I wasn't able to measure oh, it. Okay. But for my butt meter, which is pretty <laughs> pretty well calibrated after doing this for 11 years, I, I have no doubt it's three seconds because you get tunnel vision and you start to feel sick to your stomach. So if you were right next to a TRX, uh, you it, think TRX it, would be way behind you probably. a TRX, yeah. yeah. Yeah, TRX is four and a half. Yeah. This is definitely much quicker. I mean, that's, you know, 1,200 pounds for the torque. Acceleration is all about torque. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what is that? Double the TRX almost? Almost double the amount of torque that TRX has. Yeah, 650 TRX has. Yeah. So, yeah. And TRX weighs about, what, 6,500 pounds. Yeah. But, yeah, still, this is electric. So basically, electric basically you're, you're doing a four-wheel burnout. I mean, it, the, you could tell the thing is working hard, even with 35s from the factory to keep that power. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, they wanted to show off the air suspension, so we went on a, on a pretty like um, right. At, it was a, it was a paved road, but it was oh it, really like rough. Yeah, yeah. They wanted to show just how well, and it did it did ride really well. There were some uh, things I did notice. Uh, air, I mean, because you've got electric motors, it's very quiet, so all the other sounds start to come through. So like the noise intrusion around the uh, A pillar uh, was was very noticeable, and they said that they're changing that on the production trucks, that they're aware of that. Uh, and the tire noise was pretty loud, too. When you're doing, like, 75, you well, can... Well, because these are all-terrain tires. Yes. You know, they're pretty beefy. They're beefy all-terrain yeah. tires. Uh, so that was also pretty loud. Those were the two things. But maybe it's just because, you know, I've never been in, a, a, like, an off-road truck. That was uh, electric. That was also. electric, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Oh, what, did you do anything else? Yeah, and then the engineer was like, "Are you okay if I do a, you know, like a, if I do a power slide?" <laughs> and I'm like, "What?" Yeah, I'm like, "Hell, go for it, dude!" <laughs> and we got back on the dirt road and we started sliding that thing around. It's not hard to slide it around okay. <laughs> with that much horsepower, so you can get pretty, uh, you can hoon it pretty quickly, pretty easily. Uh, and they, so were, that's they were like having a little bit of fun with that. The biggest and the heaviest side by side you will ever see. Perfect description. I'd say. That was a really good description. And then we parked it. Then I had a chance to ask them a whole bunch of questions uh, that uh, they weren't, uh, you know, ready to answer. So I asked, "How much will it tow?" How much? They haven't released that number yet. Uh, I asked, "What's the payload?" I checked. No sticker. <laughs> okay. So they wouldn't say the payload. <laughs> no. Uh, no. What, what about like range? I mean, did they confirm like I didn't ask towing about range? range or I think anything? they've already said three fifty. Okay. Uh, I asked them for charging rate. They said this was interesting. They said it, it'll charge at three hundred and fifty kilowatts, which would make it the fastest charging vehicle. That that. So that it's you can more buy. than a Porsche. Porsche is two hundred seventy. Yeah. So this would this would max out the Electrify America new stations at three fifty if it indeed does charge at three hundred fifty kilowatts. So that was and, pretty interesting. And also, when I was there with the SUV, because I, I did a video, not driving, but I did a presentation with the SUV, Hummer uh, Electric, they told me they also have like a power export. Did, did you talk about that? Because I think it was about three and a half, maybe 3.3 kilowatts of, you know, inverter I did, I did not ask about the inverter question. Okay. That's, a, that's a good point. I did ask about something interesting, though, that I found out. And they had, they had one with, like, uh, a spare tire rack in the bed, and mm -hmm. there was another one. You could do two spare tires in the back, like, like a Baja truck, right? Okay. And I said, where does the spare tire live? Oh, where? In the bed? Oh, if you don't get to that one, yeah. you don't have a spare tire? Right. No oh. run flat, no spare tire. Well. Which, you know, for an off-road truck. 
So you do have, if you are going off road, you need that accessory. Yeah, he, sa- he said underneath, that's where the motor lives, the dual motors in the so back, so you couldn't put it underneath. I guess, you know, traditionally Hummers had, you know, the tailgate uh, mounted tire, right? Where you mount a tire this in has, the back. This has the pro tailgate. Oh, like a GMC yeah, Sierra. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. You know, the one that also has a little top. And the bed, did you I did. Did you get a perception of how deep it was, or could you reach into it? Could you get anything out of it? Not unless you crawl up a ladder. <laughs> it's a very tall truck. Uh, but it's okay. a traditional bed. It's a full-size bed, so five and a half feet, right? It's a full-size bed, so you, you, you do have all the bed space if you want to haul motorcycles. If you, but if there's you, no, like, an avalanche, you know, mid-gate where you can close it and put long items, right? You can only just roll down the, the window. Correct? You could roll down the window or you could, you could you know, you, at the tailgate, the little, the little tiny cutout part folds down and then comes Oh, yeah, up. so you can put them longer items, items in there. In there. Uh, okay. And then I suppose, and I didn't ask him to do this, but I suppose you can drop the truck because it's got suspension. So you could drop it lower so you could actually reach in there. But, dude, with 35s, it's, it's going to be a tall truck even at its lowest uh, and it's got a powered front, which is actually good size. So all four of those panels, they stack up and they fit in the in the front. Or, you know, it's, I don't think it's quite as big as the new Lightning. I think the Lightning has a bigger front, but certainly it's big enough to hold luggage, you know, a big size, couple, you know, maybe four roller boards, certainly, you know, all the groceries you could ever buy if you had yeah. a normal size family. Um, yeah, so it's got a lot of room in the front. So that's very interesting. The electric I- too, you know, so you, on, the, on the key fob, you can pop the front. Uh, and, you know, they promised to have it ready and for sale this last quarter of the year. So they're already, you know, starting to so figure out. November, like, December. Like they're already so. doing, like they said, they're already starting to do like the, the, the first row of build outs, right? The first ones that roll down that are not for sale, but are just kind of the test units. Okay, interesting. Because that's what they promised. They yeah. promised this year. Yeah, they said it's going to be available this okay. year. So, well, dude, you know, so, so uh, uh, you know, you know, I asked you, you know, what did I, what do you think on the plane? Yeah, did you, did you want yeah, to buy I want it? one? Oh, hell yeah, I want really? one. Really? I want, yeah, I want one, but I'm not <laughs> sure I want one for 112. 100, it's, it's such a big number. So $80,000, I, I, I'd be like, hey, let's get one right away. Well, because it's like a TRX price. Yeah, it's basically. like a TRX, but, you know, more capable in a lot of ways, right? Because it's, it is, it just, it's quicker, uh, it's well, if you can charge it, I guess, quick enough. You know, I, I'm assuming it'll tow more. I mean, if the Rivian tows 11,000, you know, th- this thing should certainly tow. At least maybe 10? A big number, yeah. And the Rivian's a mid-sized truck. This is definitely like, This is know, a heavy-duty yeah. sized yeah, so, vehicle. Yeah, so the TRX tows 8,000. Uh, it's a convertible, right, which is always cool. But uh, So you were kind of lusting for it. I was after, lusting for it, but okay. that number, it's just... It's just a hard number to get. It's a hard, hard number to get. Well, this past. is before taxes. This is before yeah, registration. You're, look, you're looking at this like one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Yeah. When it's all said and done. Yeah. You know. So, so, so I, I, I yeah, it, eighty thousand, eighty-five. I'd be all over it. One hundred twelve. Hmm. Because look, at eighty thousand, you can still go and get yourself like, uh, like that mini SE we have with with the money. Between, that's left over. That's left over, or something else. Some other car. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's certainly, you know, um, going to be an interesting experiment to see if if this is going to be the the new it thing, which it could be. You know, it could be it could become like the new G wagon, right? Right now, if you you know if you live in a certain neighborhood in America uh, and you want to show off that that you have made it in life, you know, there are certain vehicles you drive, and that's what became with the original Hummer. That's what unfortunately it became it became the sign of conspicuous consumption, right? So it started out as we want to build. Uh, kind of military, very good off-roader, and it turned into like rappers putting 22s on it and driving it down or Hollywood 26s. Boulevard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we'll see what happens with this. You know, we'll see if this becomes a status symbol. It might, in, in which case, 112 will seem cheap. Uh, a G wagon starts at 126, I yeah, think, or something like and that, and it goes up yeah. to almost. Two, you know, if you get the Desinio, you can get well into like 225, two. You know, and that's not even the new square that's coming. Uh, and well, so, that, yeah, and that 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 moment, you know, money is no longer an, an object, an, yeah. op- an object, right? Yeah. You're just paying for, like you said, status. Yeah, basically. So, so will this become like a status thing? Uh, will Will it become the ultimate? Um, let's call it super truck. Right now, you know, we're calling the first super truck the TRX. Uh, the Raptor R is coming next year, so that's going to be the second super truck. But this certainly, I think, if if you judge super trucks by 
um, any normal criteria, which would be like, you know, how fast is it? Uh, by the way, I think the top speed isn't that fast. I want to say they told me, but it's not a lot. It's maybe 104, I want to say. I think it's probably tire limited. It's tire right? limited, it's yeah. Ti- it's whatever the tires can yeah. do. It's, be- it's based on the tire. And you, uh, honestly, you wouldn't, it's a 9,000 pound vehicle, you do not want to take it over, <laughs> over like 100 miles an hour because that weight, it's still. You, you have know, to slow the, it down. Yeah, exactly. The, the physics of it don't change. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, will it become like, uh, you know, so, like the, 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 it, the it could. It, it has that potential. Zero to 60 in three seconds. You're going to embarrass uh, a lot of very expensive sports cars easily. Not, not like you won't even have to think about it. You'll easily embarrass a lot so, of expensive sports cars. And compared to like in my book, it's, you know, compared to a Tesla Model S Plaid or even a Tesla Model S, which, you know, Tesla Model S right around 100. The Plaid, I want to say, is in the same ballpark. I think like 120 if I remember right. Sure. I would get the GMC all day long. All day long. Because it's more functional. It's a convertible. Right. It tows. It hauls. It's <laughs> got more battery. It's got faster charging, according to you know. A, 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 we're guessing at that. So is it a truck? Yeah, no, it, yeah. it's a truck because it has all that capability. Yeah, it's a truck. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a it's a truck. It could be a truck for non truck people. <laughs> If you have the money. If you have the money. If you have the money. Or it could be the ultimate truck for all those guys who are like, yeah, the TRX, I'm so done with it. <laughs> I, want, I want something else. I want yeah. something else. Well, yeah. Cool. Well, and, I, and I, it's, I, it's also got like, you know, the, the, the magic that Tesla brings, which is all this like like tweetable stuff, like the crab walk, right? This is the stuff now that sells vehicles. It's it's no longer about like, hey, you know, built like a rock. Now it's about what cool Watch stuff. Watch me do things. What yeah. cool stuff will it do? And how can I show, you know, how can I show off fart mode to my friends? Totally. Well, I cannot wait to uh, actually get it over here and test it and drive it. Yeah. You know? It should and be soon, right? If it's, if it's going to be this, this, this year. Yeah. yeah. Well, very cool, dude. So there you have it. So the least expensive pickup, the Maverick, the most expensive pickup, the, the Hummer EV truck. And they're all coming this year. They're all, it's going to be good, 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 good year <laughs> good for stuff. trucks. Yeah. So, you know, if we can get, if one of you guys wants to, if you get Rivian, uh, let us know. We'd love to test that. So we, we still have to get our hands on a Rivian. Uh, we will be getting our hands on a Tundra very soon. So I can't wait to totally. test that. We just drove these two trucks. It's it's like you know it's like it's like the golden age of truck them right now. It's absolutely crazy, and it just gonna keep going. The Lightning is next year yeah. as well. Yeah, the so, Cyber Truck at some point. Yeah. So it's going to be a really good year, year and a half. All right, guys, thanks again for watching. Thank you to all our Patreon supporters. And by the way, if you're looking for a great place to get all your TFL content, go to tfl-studios.com, where we do our podcasts, our videos, and our news all in one place. One-stop shop. Thank you, guys. Ciao. (laughs) Did you drop the mic? We dropped the mic. Okay.